Very simple one. I want you to understand the context. They've been arrested for healing a lame man. They've been arrested for that. And then they were threatened by the Sanhedrin, the ruling authorities, not to speak in this name anymore. And what do they say? For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Listen, when we're in the word of God, when we see Jesus high and lifted up in our life, the word of God becomes like a fire in our bosom. We have to speak what we see. We have to speak what we're heard. Again, the evidence of what's going on is what we talk about, what we're looking at, where our heart is moving towards. And, and these, these guys were threatened, and, and they, they actually do what we call civil disobedience. And, they, and, you know, and they just say, we can't but speak of, which, of the things which we have seen and heard. And, and that's what I want to encourage us to understand, that if we will get into the Word of God, if we'll begin to move our heart toward the work of God and, and, and see that we're doing the will of God in our lives, then we begin to talk about these scriptures. I love, I work with some Christian guys, and I can talk about scriptures with some of them, and we can have conversations, and iron can sharpen iron, and we can talk about the stories that are in the Bible and the things that are going on in the world. But so often you get around Christians and they will shut you down if you say anything about the Bible. Because all we know is the world. We don't know the word. We know the world, but we don't know the word. And the word is a living person. It's Jesus Christ. And we need to be looking for his favor, looking for his face, looking for the relationship with him. I was so, I, this morning I heard a song I'd never heard, and I, and I can't even tell you completely the whole song. Uh, I was listening to a station that I don't listen to except for the news, and this song come on, and I thought, well, that, that is really profound when you speak about the church today. Because she was singing about seeking the giver and not the giving. Seeking, seeking the, the, the blesser and not the blessing. She was singing about seeking Jesus and not just stuff. Not just looking for what I can get. Do you see the difference? There's a great difference in living a life for Christ and doing what he wants you to do than living a life and saying you know Christ and continuing to do what you want to do. There's a big difference in how we live when we meet Jesus Christ who has purchased us with his blood. Anybody? Acts 4 and 20. I'll have to read it, Pastor Greg. Thank you. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Acts 4 20. Thank you. Notice it's not like, it's not like uh, we feel like we're supposed to. Hey, we're going to. It says, for we cannot but speak. They have to speak. It's a fire in their bosom. It's so alive. It's so powerful. It's the cure. Like if we had the cure for cancer, hide it underneath the bed. Don't tell anybody in case we ever get it. We might need this cure. Don't ever let anybody else know. We would never do that. We would go out and sell it to the world. We would go out and give it to the world. We would do something to take care of it. And that's the gospel. That's the word of God. That's the good news. It's what cures everybody. It cures cancer. Listen to me. Jesus Christ cures cancer. He might take that body home and that person to be with him and beautiful in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints because he knows they're with him for eternity. But people need to hear the gospel, what we've seen and heard so that they can come to a saving knowledge. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So they threatened them some more. They threatened them. They said, hey, we, 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 we cannot but speak these things which we've seen and heard. So they threatened them some more. And they went away, and they met with their buddies, and they praised the Lord that they were counted worthy to be threatened. Anybody else? Acts 4.20. What have you been talking about? 
What's your conversation about? What are you telling people about? Is it what you've seen and heard? See, that's part of what the equipping of the saints is about. When we get into the word, prayer, and fellowship, when we're on Sunday morning equipping the saints, when we're on Friday night going even deeper, it's what we've seen and heard. I mean, you know what? I used to get blown away when you see in the scripture something and God reveals that to you and you're seeing it. you got to go tell somebody about that. When you see what Jesus is doing in the scriptures or you see what God has done through the word of God, and then you hear it and you go, oh my goodness, I've got to tell somebody that, that story, that analogy. I just think it's amazing. Nobody else? Acts 4.20? Okay. I can say for myself personally. Yes. I belong to a blog that I, that I write on. And I can't help but say the things I say about Jesus and salvation and stuff. I cannot tell you the amount of persecution, ridicule, and mocking that I put up with because of it. But I can't shut up, so this is a perfect verse for something like that. Yeah, it is a perfect verse, and it's it's getting worse. It's I mean, you know, here here's the part that really bothers me the most about it is that we'll go to the schools of higher learning or we'll watch a Jeopardy or we'll watch a TV show and we'll learn some little bit of information that they tell us and we're not ashamed to talk about it. We're not afraid to talk about those things, but we won't talk about the Lord and creator of the heavens and the earth to people who are dying and going to hell because the devil has got us living in fear and ridicule. And I just think that we need to, to ask God to make us to make us like more like Daniel, to make us more like Paul, to make us more like Jesus, where we would not be afraid to open our mouth and share the gospel. But the devil keeps us in fear. And really that fear separates us from the work of God in our life. And the growth that would come with it. It doesn't help us any. The devil's, the devil's a liar and a loser. Okay, so next week, let's try this one. We might have to do it for two weeks. It's a pretty long one because I'm going to do two verses. It's Psalms 75, verses 6 and 7. Great psalm. You can read the whole psalm, look at the whole psalm, get some context. We'll talk about it a little bit in the next couple weeks. But it says this, For exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. Notice it didn't say from the north. Remember, Jesus ascended up. God is in the third heaven right now. He's everywhere, but that's just it's just poetic in the way that it's put. God is the one who puts down one and exalts another. Now listen to me. I think we have to be really careful because, see, God is sovereign, and he could and he can choose one and not choose another, but he chooses all. And as we're going to see in tonight's text, the way that he puts up and he, or he takes down or exalts is because he knows the heart of man. He knows the heart of people. That's how he does it. He doesn't just go, oh, randomly, let's just knock all of them down. And randomly, let's just pick all them up. Mm -hmm. Even though he sovereignly could and can if he wants to, he sees those who are having a heart toward him. He, he, he sends out and dispatches angels to protect those who are, are going to come to salvation. They're ministering angels to protect us. And so we know that he's doing that work. But it's when we resist him, when we don't do the things that he's calling us to do in a free will way, that he begins to exalt and put down. And, and I don't know how it all works. Because I'm not God and his ways are higher than my ways. But it's God who brings um, exaltation it is God who tears down. He's in, the, in control of every man's heart. So kind of ponder that, chew on that, um, 
and then we'll memorize it for the next couple weeks and really just consider it, considering that we're in 1 Samuel and we're getting ready to start chapter 16 where Saul has been rejected and the, and the kingdom has been taken from him and David is coming to the, to the forefront. There's going to be a new king. But remember this as we go through the text and do this scripture is that God was looking at the heart of Saul and the heart of David. He wasn't looking at their physical stature. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. So we, no matter what size we are, no matter what we, who we are or what we know or how much money we got, it's God looking at the heart of a person who's willing to bow down and obey and quickly confess when you're not obeying and do the will of God. Amen? Amen. Amen.